Hey friends, it is Miss Liz here and I am back with another installment of Kitchen Science! This month we are going to be making our very own salt dough fossils. Now this program was a grab and go that was offered by the library, so hopefully if you are registered for this program you have headed down to the library to pick up your grab and go kit. If you did not get a chance to sign up or do not have a grab and go bag at home, that's okay. These programs are designed to be done using stuff that you just have around your kitchen. So we are going to go through our supply list that we need for today's salt dough fossils and we are going to get our science experiment on. So grab your lab jackets or your aprons, depending on what you like to wear in the kitchen, and head on down with me to see how this experiment is done. To get our experiment started, you're going to need a few things. The first set of things can be found in your make and take bag, which you picked up from the library. In this bag are your flour, your salt, some dinosaurs, a skeleton, and some seashells. You're also gonna to wanna to go grab a few more things that you can find in your kitchen. You're going to want to grab a cookie sheet and line it with a piece of tin foil. You're going to want to grab a large mixing bowl. You're going to want to grab about half a cup of water. And you're going to want to grab a mixing spoon to mix it all together. Items you can also add if you'd like to your supply list can be food coloring or glitter if you want to make your fossils a different color. I am not going to be adding any color to mine because I want them to look as true to a fossil as possible. However, if you want to be colorful and fun with your fossils, by all means, add in whatever you'd like to your dough. If you're using the oven for this project, you are going to start the experiment by preheating your oven to 200 degrees. If you are not using the oven for this experiment, please feel free to skip this step. Once you have all of your supplies assembled and your oven is preheating to 200 degrees, if you're using your oven, you are going to start mixing up your salt dough. So for that, you're going to take your grab and go bag and find the bag that says flour on it and you're going to dump all that flour into the, a large bowl in front of you. Next, you're going to take the bag in your grab and go bag that says salt and dump that in on top of the flour. And lastly, you're going to take about half a cup of water and slowly add that into your mix. Don't add all of it at first because we want to make sure our dough is nicely formed. So you're gonna pour about half of it in there and you're gonna mix it around. So as we're mixing this around, we are gonna talk a little bit about the science behind fossils. Have you ever wondered how we know so much about dinosaurs even though it's been a million years since they walked the earth? Well, the answer is because we have fossils to thank for that. Fossils can give scientists clues about animals, plants, and everything else that lived a long, long time ago. As your water starts to dissolve, feel free to add more water in there. And just keep repeating this process until you get a nice dough to work with. So how exactly are fossils made? Well, fossils are made when the body of an animal that has since passed starts to sink into the dirt or the mud, whatever ground is around them. Some parts of the animal's body will decay over time, but the harder, stronger parts, like the teeth and bones, will remain. The reason why I tell you to add the water slowly in is because you can always add more water, but if you have too much water, it's harder to take it out. You would need to add more ingredients into your salt dough recipe. So a little water at a time will get you the perfect dough to make. These remains stay in the mud for a very long time, and eventually more mud will start pressing down on top of those remains. Over time, minerals from the surrounding dirt, rock, and other debris will turn those remains into a hard fossil. This fossil is basically a stone copy of the original object that it started to form around. If as you're starting to start, it's getting harder and harder to use a spoon, feel free to take your hands and stick them in there like the archaeologists that you are today and start molding the dough that way. Fossils can also be formed through a process called petrification, and this happens when minerals replace previously living material. Wood and bone are often petrified, and so are many dinosaur fossils. If you're using anything like food coloring or glitter, now is the time to add it. What you would do is you would make a well in your dough bowl, just like this, pour it in there and just start squishing it together. 
until that fossil dough becomes the color that you want it to be. Like I said at the beginning, I'm not going to add any colors into mine because I want mine to look like a rock as much as possible. So I'm going to keep it this nice beige flower color. Once your dough is nicely formed in a ball, that's how you know it's ready. There shouldn't be any flour anywhere or any salt that's sticking out. It should be a perfectly blended blob. From there, you can grab your cookie tray that you had pre-lined with some foil, and you're gonna start making ovals out of your fossil dough. So these can be as big or as small as you want them to be. Just think though, because these are gonna be our fossils, they should be at least a little bit larger than whatever you're gonna press into them. So I'm gonna make my ovals about the size of the palm of my hand, give or take. You can make them perfect circles, you can give them bumps and edges like a rock, whatever you prefer. So what can we learn from fossils? Fossils can give us a lot of information about the past that we never would have known without them. Like what animals and plants looked like, where animals traveled, what animals ate, and so much more. Fossils like footprints can help us learn about an animal's size and shape. For example, if an animal had a very big footprint, he was probably a very big animal. Make sure as you're pushing these down, your fossils are nice and thick. That is because we are gonna push our specimen into it, so you don't want them to be too thin like a cookie. After you have them all set on your tray, the real fun begins. You're gonna decide what you want to be enclosed in each fossil. Take that item and gently press it into them. Like this. Once you have the mold, you are gonna gently pull your item up. check out the imprint on that fossil. If you like the way that imprint looks, that's perfect. You can move on to the next fossil. If you want to try to pre-press it because it wasn't as defined, you can do that as well. Or if you're like me and you didn't like it at all, you can peel your dough off and re-roll it into another ball and use it again. So I didn't like it because I think I need a little bit more dough added to mine to make that guy. So that's what I'm going to do. Now this, I think, should be able to fit him. Footprints can also tell us where and how far animals used to travel. Fossilized burrows or animal homes also give us information about where those animals lived. And did you know that even poop can be fossilized? Fossils of poop are called corporolites and they can tell us what a creature ate. That along with fossilized teeth tell us which dinosaurs were carnivores, meat eaters, which were herbivores, plant eaters, and which were omnivores, which means they ate both meat and plants. So now I like the way my bones look, especially up here on his like ribcage area. I'm gonna move on to the next one and see what he looks like. So now that you've learned a little bit more about fossils, aren't they so interesting? Fossils are so important because they give us clues about what life was like a really long time ago. If we didn't have fossils, think about it, we probably wouldn't even know that dinosaurs existed. By doing this experiment, we can create our own fossils and make our own footprint in the world. So I hope you're having as much fun with this experiment as I am and keep up the good work. After you've had all the fun of making your fossils, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this tray if you're using your oven, and you're gonna stick it into that oven that's been preheating at 200 degrees, and you're gonna bake them for about an hour. If you are not using an oven, which I'm gonna do with my second set of dough to show you all the difference, you are going to just take your cookie sheet, and you're gonna put it in a safe space because you're gonna have to air dry it, and it's gonna take a few days, about three or four. So if you wanna do it that way, that's totally up to you. Just make sure it's somewhere safe and where no one's gonna think that they're sugar cookies and try to eat them on you. So I'm gonna put these guys in the oven. I'm gonna make some that are gonna air dry and we're gonna come back and we're gonna compare the two in a little bit, in a few days. So it has been four days since I last filmed 
how to make our salt dough fossils, and I am back to show you some of the results. The top three fossils are the ones that I baked in the oven at 200 degrees for an hour, and the bottom three are the ones that I made just out of plain dough, and I let them dry on the counter for four days. Both of them got super hard and super, and super fossil-like, so they are great no matter which version you go with. Once your fossils are made, you can have a wild time by painting them, putting glitter on them, decorating them, using them for whatever you want. These are your fossils, so show them off however you would like to. Thank you all so much for joining me for today's Kitchen Science, learning how to make your own salt dough fossils. I hope you had fun and learned something new in today's experiment. If you would like to show off your experiments or want to show me what you made, please feel free to send me an email at the email address below with a picture of your science experiment. I would love to see what you did in your kitchens at home. I hope to see you soon at the library and we will see you next month for our next installment of Kitchen Science. Bye!